Are you guys ready to bomb some Dongos? Welcome back to some more Ocarina of Time. We're in the Dongo Skyrim. Let's blow it up. This is the dungeon I stopped playing Ocarina of Time at. I need to... Um, this, this, this is why I decided to start streaming. I need to finish games like this. So, I'm probably going to play Ocarina of Time. Well, if you do, you'll have me and Lester here to help. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you need 100%, it don't worry. I'm pretty much the guidebook. I remember all this stuff because how many times I played it. Growing up, I intently played this game at least once a year at one point. So I played this game a lot. Probably over 20 times. Uh, that's a good thing, though, because uh, you really know everything about it. Yeah. So we're going to do a little bit of a sequence break here. I'm going to do something called a ground jump so we can hit the switch early. And in a way, we're going to go backwards in the dungeon for a little bit. Just to be different. So you're not supposed to be able to reach this ledge normally. You're supposed to go all the way around to get to this ledge. So we're going to just go in reverse. So we're not solving this puzzle, but you light these fires here. Light all the torches with fire, and you unlock that door you just came through. Moving on. I, I don't probably need to say this, but please tell me you know this dungeon on, like, great Gang Grump. Oh, man. We do a lot better here compared to them. <sighs> oh, Dino Fools. Yeah, these guys are kind of annoying, and we fight them twice in this dungeon. I dino fool. So I'm gonna get myself some infinite sword glitch and uh, walk into my stick. Was that wrong of me to say? No. <laughs> the game grumps. No. Yeah, it are infinite for this game for a reason. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, it's just more or less, you know. You know, I I don't understand if you, if you're not good at the game, but when a game obviously gives you the tools to, you know, work with it, to, to make it okay to play. Use them! Don't complain about it, you know, it's like, yeah. why can't I do this? When you actually can do that, it's just, you're incompetent. Well, that's my whole problem with Eager Raptor's sequelitis on this game. I've watched it back, like, a few months ago, and just watching it again after you realize all the weird critiques he makes just makes it really stand out for why putting your opinions as fact never works. He's complaining yeah. about all these things, that's a problem, and most of them are not because... Can you read the screen? Like, he, he doesn't pay attention. When you go back and watch, like, watch their playthrough of Ocarina of Time, it's just like... He doesn't use the shield. Well, one of the biggest things that bothered the hell out of me is, in certain instances, he didn't use his shield. I'm just like, why am I taking unnecessary damage all the time? Blah, 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 blah. It's like because you're defending yourself. Yeah, have you pressed R lately? There's an R button? Now, granted, that was intentional. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I, say, I missed just slightly with my jump attack. That was kind of my fault. Now I'm going to have nightmares. Thanks, Lester. Oh, man. I think the weirdest shots with that is whenever you try to backflip for a skull shot, you get an upskirt shot just seeing Link's floating feet. Because the model for Link is weird because they cut the feet off right before his skirt, so they're floating at least like an inch off his body. N64 graphics at their finest. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I just... The thing is that one of the biggest things that I had to complain with, and this was still when John Tron was still there, is... <sighs> they're playing on Sonic 06. And, you know, I understand. The game's off. Like, it is awful. But, in some instances, they were in, uh, you know, Kingdom Valley, and they were taking control of Silver for the first time in Sonic Story. And, you know, this is the first time they actually played as Silver. And they got to the part where you could, you have to, you know, um, like, bend the bars with your psychokinesis to kind of get to make a hole. Remember that? Like, I read the very, yeah, very I know beginning which part of, of the game you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. They didn't understand what you were supposed to do, but, the, yeah, they're saying, oh, this game is so stupid, blah, 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 look how dumb it is because I can't figure out how to do this crap, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, guys, there's a freaking hint bubble right there. It'll tell you. What the heck? Yep, and that's the problem in our age of gaming because there's a lot of gamers who do that, and then they completely ignore the tutorial that's literally in front of their face. That's why any more tutorials are screaming in your face. Also, I start bullcrap on what you just did. 
What, he activated the armos after he got the compass? Yeah, bullcrap on what you just did. All you gotta do is rub against him and that's it. Yes, Navi, I know they're bomb flowers. They're blowing up as we speak. <laughs> Navi, you're a little late. I'm surprised that still worked because half of the bomb flowers came back. You need to destroy all of them at once in order to make the bridge come down, and half of them were here by the time the cutscene triggered. <laughs> no, it's just like, I, like, like I said, I understand. Uh, you know, Sonic 06 isn't the greatest game in the world. I mean, granted, we did a whole playthrough of it on this channel. Yeah. So, we already know how bad a game can get. Sometimes. Yeah, even Patrick Star Wars shot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um... But it's just like, the game obviously gave you tutorial to understand how it's mechanics. Please, for the love of God, before you start complaining about how the game doesn't do doesn't tell you anything, make sure that there's a freaking tutorial, especially if you're doing videos. Because yeah. that just makes you look incompetent, and it makes you look stupid. Oh, damage boost. More or less, I'm getting stuck between two Armos and a, a statue of Armos. I guess you could say. No, don't, don't, don't. I don't. guess you could say you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. I almost thought you were gonna go stumped and like that's not wood. No. I, I figured that it would be appropriate to do Armos because Armos statues are made out of stone. Yeah. So. Okay, well, Lester's proven to me that he does know the dungeon better than Gangrub, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Doing a lot better. I actually use my shield. In fact, look, I'm actually swapping my shield to make sure it doesn't get burned for a bit. I don't like using Hylian shields as a kid because you can't hold this normally, it's too big. So Link has to crouch down like a turtle to use the dang thing. So that's why I equip Deku shield immediately, even though we can technically burn it with the fire. I don't like using Hylian shield at all. I don't blame you. Because Link's just not strong enough to, to hold it. That's just too big. It's too big. That shield is too big. Why he holds the deck to stick in two hands? Too big. Oh, another thing that really bothered me about that is about the game crimps thing is just like, what did what did Eager after say? Is that like Deku Neku nuts are like the most pointless item in the game? They can kill the final boss. They're not pointless. I'm like. Deku nuts are so strong. What the hell are you talking about? They stun enemies. So many people don't think Deku nuts are good. It's weird. I mean, I didn't really use them much growing up, but I realized they're a really helpful tool because of the stunning. See? Use the shield. Yeah. <laughs> it's a miracle. I actually can defend. Look at those Lizalfos. Look at these goofy enemies. I like them, though. I think they're fun. I like Lizalfos too. I do. I, I like their like them and their cousin Dinofoles because I just like how their names. Yeah. A goofy name, but I like how they have scarfs basically from the look here. Like on the N64, I think it's supposed to be more like an armor, but it looks like a scarf on the arm. Me. <laughs> I yeeted on them goofy fires. <laughs> Uh, is it bad I like the original better than do the 3DS version? On um, um, Ocarina of it, it yeah. has some changes I'm not as big of a fan of, so I'm, I'm kind of the same. I prefer the original release. I mean, between you and me, I like the original of Superstar over the remake. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. I don't know. Uh, I feel like one of the big things with that game in particular that... I don't know. I like the 3DS remake. Don't get me wrong. It, it's a good remake. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like the original's cartoony graphics fit it better. Yeah, it was more expressive, I feel, in a way. Yeah. And this is the problem with remakes and stuff like that. Everybody wants really great and everything. Sometimes I feel like cartoony graphics, especially because they age really well, it's just like, do we really need a remake of it? Yeah, there, there's some games that actually age better than you would expect, actually. So you, you don't really need to change it. You don't need to update it. Wind Waker is pretty much the biggest, like, example of this. I feel like that game has aged very well. Oh, yeah. I mean, the HD port even shows it because in some areas, it actually looks worse than the original. Yeah. 
And don't get me wrong, I like the I like the HD version of Wind Waker. It's just, and especially with all the stuff they added, but yeah, especially with the Triforce chart thing, like it, it could have been perfectly fine to keep on the GameCube, and it still would have held up great graphically. I mean, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, all the all the quality of life updates really helped. And not only that, they they fixed the Triforce quest. Oh yeah, that was the big one because that right there saved you a couple hours. Yeah, <laughs> and lots of rupees. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's fine to like like the original more than the remake. You're not in You're not. You are not expected to like. To fall in love with a remake of a game you like. Yeah, there, there are some remakes I think do the game justice, but then some uh, not so much. I well, my biggest example is the the Luigi's Mansion remake on 3DS. I think it's actually worse than the GameCube one, especially when it comes to control. It just does not feel as good as GameCube controls. That's what happens when you port a game to a system that doesn't nearly have a second stick, and even the second stick control in the new 3DS is horrible. Now, what were you saying, Amber? I'm sorry. Um, well, I, like I was talking to Lester about this during the break, but I will always prefer the PS1 version of Metal Gear over the Twin Snakes because I just don't like the voice acting of the Twin Snakes as much. Okay, well, that's a good reason. But you... a lot of people like the Twin Snakes version better than they do the original, I, so. I actually heard the opposite because I, I know a lot of people don't like Twin Snakes because of how. Goofy, some of the scenes can get with the over dramatic, like action sequences, yeah. like um, the Hind D scene where Snake literally like does a matrix jump, it lands on the missile, jumps off of it to shoot Hind D down. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Yeah, I can understand that. Although, from what I've heard, it's mixed. Some people prefer the GameCube version, some people prefer the PS1. I, I really just think it depends on who you talk to. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, you're not expected to like a remake over, yeah. you know. And I like the original Resident Evil than I do over the remake on GameCube. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. How about the later director's cut that has the, the weird trumpets? <laughs> the two directors? Trumpet. Yeah, I don't play that version, so. Oh, man, you're missing out. No, I, I like the original Resident Evil over the remake. Oh, we're already at the boss? Yep, already at King Dodongo. The first boss. Me, man. Fast. Yeah, child dungeons are really short. Like, we can go through all the child dungeons in this game in one part each. They're that short. Alright, here he comes. Here comes the final boss in some speedrun categories, which I found hilarious. Does this just warp you to the credits if done right? Yeah, it, a specific setup for a ROM warp, you can take uh, Forrest Wind in here on B, and if you use Forrest Wind on B while warping out on the blue warp here, it can warp you into the final credits scene. Like, past the point where you put down the uh, Master Sword in the pedestal time, so you're literally at the very end talking to Zelda as Adult Link. A little awkward when kid Zelda's talking to adult Link. <laughs> Link, how'd you get so big? So I think this is actually the easiest boss in the whole game. Even easier than Goma, because... He's already dead. Look at that. Seriously, two hits. Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. Deku Nuts are, are not strong. Uh, Deku Nuts are worthless items. I didn't use a single nut. I used a stick. Oh, I thought you used a nut. Nope. Threw a bomb his mouth to stun him. I use the Deku stick to store that in my power crouch tab thing because that's useful. Two jumps, uh, two jump slashes with the stick will kill King Dodongo. See, you, you, you go so fast, Luster, with your actions. I literally thought you were using Deku nut instead of doing all that stuff you did with the stick. Too fast. Slow down. I yeeted on them goofy, goofy <laughs> bosses. Yeah, so that was Dodongo's cavern in its entirety. We do have to come back here later for two sculptures, but we actually can't get those at all yet. We need to wait until we come back here later on as an adult, so they're going to be here for a bit. Seven years to be exact. Oh no. 
Old man wants hugs. Run away. Oh, if you watch this cutscene as an adult, it's hilarious. Link bounces up and down all over the place. They eat delicious rocks. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the plot point here. The, the reason why all the Gorons are upset is this tunnel is blocked off to get into the Dongo's Cavern, and it's their source of food. But these guys eat rocks. Any rock would be fine, but now they're the picky Gorons. They want the best rocks, which is in the Dongo's Cavern. But these guys are starting themselves for the wrong reason. The town is starving because they decide to be picky. Yep. yep. Okay. You guys have issues. <laughs> like, I'm not going to eat any food until I get my lobster. Come on, hunger strike until I get my lobster. There you go. There's your second stone, though. Yep, there's only one more left. Then we get to skip half the game and move to adult. Yep. <laughs> Which, to be fair, the majority of the game you do play as adult Link. Anything that you can do, normally it's better to be as an adult. He's faster, he's stronger, he has more equipment to work with. Overall, she's better. I still need... Now that we've gotten past the part... <laughs> did I stop that playing this game? Well, it's not like you ain't seen what happens next, though. Yeah, I'm, I've seen Let's Plays of this, like, I don't know how many times. So I know pretty much, like... It's not like I don't know with the whole thing, but I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. Say. I've seen plenty of Let's Plays, watched plenty of playthroughs, watched plenty of streams, watched plenty of speedruns. It's not like I don't know this game. <laughs> it's just, I haven't beaten it myself. But have you seen the game crash on Dampe? I have, and it's hilarious. It's funny. Yep. Run away, Link, if they want a hug! There, there is a very slim chance. When you're playing the Virtual Console version, there's a very slim chance of the game just randomly crashing. I've seen a crash on Dampe before. And it's just bittersweet.